what is Monolith Soft's first Nintendo Switch 2 project going to be? That's been a burning question in my mind, and I've wanted to talk to you guys about this for a while, but based on recent rumors and leaks that have happened just a few days ago, I think we need to talk about this right now, and it's a very relevant topic to talk about. Hey guys, Nishquick here, and as you guys might know, Monolith Soft is Nintendo's big powerhouse development studio. They have their hands in so many different projects, whether it is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, Animal Crossing, Splatoon, and especially their own series that they've created themselves, the Xenoblade Chronicles series. They really know how to take advantage of limited hardware and get the most out of any hardware they're developing on. So today, I want to discuss the possibilities of what they're going to have to showcase when the Nintendo Switch 2 is revealed. So in this video, I have four possibilities of what we could see Monolith Soft show as their next game and their debut on the Nintendo Switch 2. Two of these possibilities I'm not really so sure of, but the last two I am very certain that we will at least see sometime in the Switch 2's life cycle. And our favorite resident leaker Midori has thrown her a hat into this discussion as well. So if you enjoy Monolith Soft, the Xenoblade Chronicles series, Nintendo and JRPGs, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments below what you think Monolith Soft's first project on the Switch 2 is going to be. Without any further ado, let's get started. So let's discuss the first two unlikely scenarios right now. The first being Xenosaga, and the big reason why this is unlikely is because Monolith Soft and Nintendo probably won't be working on anything Xenosaga related. The IP is still in the hands of Bandai Namco, and I made an entire video on this in January. You can check out the details in that video, but basically, Nintendo and Monolith Soft will not be involved in any Xenosaga HD Remastered Trilogy, and that's just personally what I think. But that doesn't mean that Xenosaga is not coming. I still very much think Xenosaga is in the works, and it's going to come, hopefully very soon. But the thing is, I don't think it's going to be exclusive to the Nintendo Switch 2. I would hope it is on the Switch 1, and maybe a cross-gen kind of thing going on, I don't know, we'll see when that happens, but if you want to see more evidence on why I think Xenosaga is very likely, check out Luxon's video on this, I'll have it in the description below, but his evidence pointing to a Xenosaga HD remaster is very, very convincing. Okay, the next option is Xenoblade Chronicles 4. The reason I don't think this is very likely to be their first project is it's kind of obvious. We literally just got Future Redeemed last year, and <laughs> the Future Redeemed capped off Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I highly, highly, highly doubt with the end of the Klaus Saga, they're immediately going to jump headfirst into what's next. We need some time to breathe, we need some time to think, theorycraft, just sit on everything that we got from Xenoblade 3 Future Redeemed and get some other games in the pipeline first, and whatever is coming next for the Xenoblade series, the main Xenoblade series, what's coming next after the Klaus Saga, I think they really need to take their time with it, and it's not going to be a Switch 2 debut from Monolith Soft. I do very much think the Xenoblade Chronicles series, or the Xenoblade series, is going to continue in some way, shape, or form, and in that same Xenosaga video that I made in January, I talk about that a bit more, so you can check that out in the description. Alright, now on to the two possibilities that I think are much more likely. We're gonna start with Xenoblade Chronicles X, something Xenoblade Chronicles X related. I want a Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition, something along the lines of what they did with Xenoblade 1, where they made a Definitive Edition on the Switch. I would love for them to do that on the Switch 2. The thing is, I would have really wanted that on the Switch 1, but the thing is, there's a lot of things going on in this game. It's a massive game, and re-engineering it and kind of 
almost remaking it to get on the Switch would probably take a lot of work and they really needed the Klaus Saga to be out quick. So with more powerful hardware, more development resources, I think they could do it on the Switch 2. It'll be a lot more feasible for them. But I'm just a little bummed because I was really hoping that Xenoblade X would get that Switch effect, as they say. There's such a massive install base on the Nintendo Switch 1 and it would really boost Xenoblade X's reach and sales potential because it really did not do that well on the Wii U because the Wii U was a very dead console and Xenoblade X didn't even hit 1 million. But I really think that if they want to bring Xenoblade Chronicles X back, if we want to get back into the world of Mira, I think more powerful hardware a more enhanced game engine than what they had with the original Xenoblade Chronicles X could really boost this game from being Nintendo's first ever modern open world game to something on the level of maybe the Breath of the Wild remaster that we might get on the Switch 2. Who knows? And hey, if it's not a Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition, Maybe it's a sequel? I don't know, just anything Xenoblade Chronicles X related would be really cool to see on Nintendo's most powerful hardware that we will get hopefully very soon. Okay, and the final possibility that I think we could see for the next Monolith Soft game before we delve into the leaks and rumors from Midori-san herself is this new IP. I've talked about this new IP in a past video as well. I'm really referencing a lot of my older videos in this video, but hear me out. This image and these other pieces of concept art do not look like anything else Monolith Soft has ever done. These images are still on their website for recruitment purposes, and it doesn't really specify what these images are for. Is it for a new game? Is it for a new IP? Who knows? A lot of people think it was to recruit people for Tears of the Kingdom. But if I remember correctly, their Zelda recruitment page was completely different and had Tears of the Kingdom branding on it as well. So I really do think this is completely different, completely unrelated. It might even be a Zelda spin-off, but I'm really hoping it is a new model of soft IP. The reason I'm hoping this is because we've gotten Xenoblade game after Xenoblade game after Xenoblade game. And you guys know me, I'm a huge, huge, massive Mega Xenoblade fan. I would not complain if we got another Xenoblade or Xeno related game. But with the genius masterminds at Monolith Soft that we know, all these genius masterminds, storytellers, developers, engineers, I would love to see what they do with an entirely new IP, an entirely new setting, an entirely new cast of characters, an entirely new genre of video games. And I think this would blow people away. Imagine in the first massive showcase presentation for the Nintendo Switch 2. We get the 3D Mario game that everyone's expecting. New Mario Kart game after 10 years. Wow, amazing, finally. We get a look at Breath of the Wild at 60 FPS. But where is the big surprise? What is the big surprise that we're gonna get? What is the show-stopping thing that we want? That would be a new IP, a new entirely original game from Monolith Soft. Maybe it doesn't even have the Xeno prefix. Who knows? We'll see. Only time will tell. And now I do want to move on to going back to Twitter and talking about a little bit of tidbits of information that we got from our favorite leaker and insider, Midori. I'll see you guys there. Before we continue, I just wanted to remind you guys I would really, really appreciate it if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You see, I really wanted to get this video out a lot sooner, but last night I had an unexpected power outage. After literally a two minute storm, I couldn't use my PC for the entire day. So I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button 
and let me know in the comments down below what you think about all this news and all this speculation and that would help it get in front of the eyes of so many other Xenoblade fans, JRPG fans, Monolithsoft fans, and everyone else who's excited for the Nintendo Switch 2. And hit the subscribe button for more content like this. We're building a legacy here on the Niche Quick Pops channel and I would love for you to be a part of it. And speaking of which, let's talk about this interesting codename leak from Midori. Alright guys, here we are on Twitter. I wanted to talk about this thread from Midori. If you guys don't know who Midori is, Midori is one of the most reliable leakers of literally all time. As you guys, many of you guys might know who she is. She leaks a lot of Sega and Atlas stuff. Look, she is teasing a lot of Persona 6 stuff over here. But for those of you who don't know who Midori is, I'll give you an idea of the kind of things that she has leaked. She leaked the existence of both of these games, Persona 3 Reload, Persona 5 Tactica. For Persona 3 Reload, she leaked the existence and the contents of the expansion pass. When all of us thought that the answer was not going to be included in the game, she said, Persona 3 Reload will have an expansion pass, it will include the answer or episode I guess. So there is even more legitimacy to her claims. She also has leaked and hinted at the existence of SMT5 Vengeance, and she's is now doing a lot of Square Enix and Nintendo related leaks as well. So that goes to show you how influential Midori is. So with that out of the way, let's talk about this. People are doubting Midori. Many people are, but it's okay. She'll do her best. This person, Link Hood over here says, I don't doubt you. Do you have any insight on info on what Monolith Soft is working on for the Nintendo Switch 2? New IP, new Xenoblade game. Here's what Midori has to say. I was told a few months ago that Monolith Soft is working on a project with the code name Legacy. So Midori is really big on code names as of late. If you guys saw my last video, I talk about the Yu King O code name for the rumored Breath of the Wild remaster. So she's also in on that. She does not have any other information other than Legacy. So we don't know what franchise it is. We don't know if it's a new IP. We don't know if it's a new Xenoblade game. All we have to go off is Legacy. So someone says Xenosaga. And this confused me a bit. I have to be honest. This kind of confused me a bit. She replied to Xenosaga saying this is a project in development with Nintendo, which made me think that she wasn't talking about Legacy, she was talking about Xenosaga. So she was like, is, Xenosaga is a project in development with Nintendo. And I was like, that makes no sense. Did they buy the IP or whatever? Well, she clarified it. She said, Legacy is a project in development by Monolith Soft. It is in development with Nintendo. So it's not an external company. This is a Nintendo published title. My buddy Mac here says, oh, the Xenogears remake. Oh, I really, really wish one day we'll get that. <laughs> but yeah. We got this tidbit of information. Monolith Soft is working hard on a project for the Nintendo Switch 2 with the codename Legacy. So, what the heck does this mean? How can this tie back to the two most likely alternatives and options that I mentioned earlier in the video? Xenoblade Chronicles X and Z like a new IP. Well, first of all, let's take a look at this. I'm gonna search this up. Xenoblade X blade acronym ah look at this blade is an acronym for builders of a legacy after the destruction of earth builders of a legacy mm. but also look at this in japanese it is known as beyond the logos artificial destiny emancipator so there is a difference in the acronym in English and Japanese. If you want to know a bit more about this beyond the logos Destiny Emancipator thing, because you can see certain logos here, you Xenoblade fans might know what that means. Um, if you want more info on this, check out the episode one discussion on the Conduit Cast channel that I had with my buddy, protagonist, and dumb Xeno. But yeah, Builders of a Legacy, this immediately made me think, could this be related to Xenoblade X? Is this a remaster? Is this a definitive edition? I don't know, but here's the thing. 
So everyone's go to Nintendo YouTuber, Nintendo Prime over here. He made this video on another one of Midori's code names, which was called Banquet, I think. But he used this website called The Cutting Room Floor to look into code names for old Nintendo Switch games. So look at this. Control F, Xenoblade. Let's look at this. Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii. Kyojin. Not really sure what that means. I have to see if it has anything relating to what we see over here. Small Folk. Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. Xenoblade Chronicles S. Space Travel Space T. That is interesting. We'll come back to that. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Big Folk. BFT. Big Folk 2. I can kind of assume that's what it is. I'm assuming Kyojin means big folk. I have to go back and fact check that. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna's era. I'm not really sure what that means. Look at this. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition BFSW. I was like, what does that mean? I think it is big folk switch. Big folk for the switch. Big folk 3 is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So I think this legacy thing is not anywhere remotely related to the Klaus Saga, to the Xenoblade Trilogy, or to what's coming next with Xenoblade 4. Because I would just assume that it would have this big slash small folk moniker in that um, code name. So I can assume that's out of the question. So Xenosaga is of course out of the question. Xenoblade like the main line Xenoblade, if you want to call it that, is also out of the question. Here is the most interesting thing though. Space travel is Xenoblade X, and Xenoblade Definitive Edition is BFSW, which is relating back to big folk. So my observation here is with these Definitive Editions, with Xenoblade Definitive Edition, it is relating back to big and small folk. Also, I just looked it up. Kyojin, I'm just doing a Google search over here. Kyojin is an extremely simple word consisting of two kanji, which translates as big and human, respectively. If anyone else in the comments speaks Japanese, you can fact check me on that. That was just a simple Google search. I don't know how reliable that is, but yeah, so big folk switch relates back to what this would translate to as Kyojin. And this legacy over here doesn't have anything to do with space travel. I would assume a definitive edition of Xenoblade Chronicles X would have something to do with space travel in the code name. Well, let, let's look at how Nintendo names their other kind of definitive editions. Let's look at... Um, Kirby, um, yeah, what is that game called? Uh, Kirby, uh, and the Forgotten Land, no. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe was Ark. Where is the original Kirby's Return to Dreamland? GCK, KBYWIUK. Hmm, interesting. Let's look at Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8 is Turbo. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is Turbo S. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe version 1.5.0 is Turbo S Labo. Oh, this, okay, Labo, okay. So, similar code names over here. Not really like how it was with Kirby. Let's look at one more, if I can think of one more. Let's look at, um, Mario 3D World, uh, okay. Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U, red carpet. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, red carpet S. Ah, so it looks like Kirby was the anomaly here. So it seems like with re-releases, remasters, definitive editions, let's look at one more just to see <laughs> what this is like. Tropical Freeze, ah. Tropical Freeze, Retro Studios 10, Retro Studios 12, okay, that's just how Retro Studios does it, okay. 
So, yeah, it, it, it might depend on how they do it with different development studios and whatnot, but I think that... Let's go back to Xenoblade. I think if Legacy was truly Xenoblade Chronicles X related, I don't know if just the Blade acronym has anything to do with it. I think that code name would have to relate back to space travel. Maybe space travel O or space T O. Because Switch 2's rumored code name is Ounce. So just like how Breath of the Wild's remaster is seemingly U King O, I would expect it to be space T O or space travel O or something like that. So what the heck is Legacy then? I'm I'm still huffing the copium here guys. I think it's a new IP. I think I don't know how legacy would relate to a new IP, but maybe we don't know about that yet. Maybe this is Monolith Soft's legacy and just using everything they learned from past experiences, past games that they worked on, all the mistakes, and all the legacy that they have built within Nintendo, within the JRPG community, they're going to be creating something new now. So I have no idea, but I can kind of rule out that this has nothing to do with Xenosaga, nothing to do with mainline Xenoblade, and maybe even nothing to do with Xenoblade X, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. My money is on a new IP. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about all of this. So what did you think of all this news? What do you think of the legacy codename and what do you guys think is going to be Monolith Soft's debut game on the Nintendo Switch 2? There's so many possibilities. Like I said, I don't really think it's going to be anything Xenosaga related or Xenoblade 4 related. I think the chances of Xenoblade X being on Switch 2 earlier rather than later are fairly high, but that new IP, man, like I really, really need to see something like that. And I would just love if Monolith Soft just branches out and does something new. I'm really excited to see what they're coming up with next. They're one of my favorite development studios of all time. They really, really know how to work their magic on the Nintendo Switch. And I know whatever they're going to do on the Switch 2 is going to be jaw-droppingly amazing. So once again, let me know what you think about all this stuff in the comments below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And subscribe for more content like this. This is Nish Quick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today, like a Monolith Soft game. All the Xenoblade Chronicles games are on the Nintendo Switch. If you haven't played them, I have no idea what you're waiting for. I'll see you guys in the next one, later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching this video. And special shout out to my channel members, 80-2014, Durzo Blint, and Sam Talks Games. I could not have done this without you guys. If you enjoyed this video, check out these two videos on the left, and why not hit the subscribe button on the way out. I'll see you guys in the next one, later.